Enterprise Architect 12.1 supports a new chart called a heat map and offers additional enhancements to the existing Kanban diagram. The example Kanban diagram on screen contains sublanes and is being used to illustrate where technologies sit in the overall product life cycle. We shall use this diagram in conjunction with a heat map to visualise data and help us make decisions. Kanban diagrams have been improved in Enterprise Architect 12.1 with the addition of sublanes. The Kanban diagram on screen represents the technology life cycle. Sublanes are used to help differentiate between active and inactive technologies. The life cycle is displayed as a tagged value. When I drag and drop a technology from one lane to another, the tagged value will automatically be updated. We can use the Kanban diagram in conjunction with a heat map to communicate about the technology life cycle, which in turn can aid decision making. Let's take a look at some of the different data sources that are available when building a heat map. This video will demonstrate how to build a heat map using package based information, custom SQL and external CSV data. It is possible to take information from specific packages in the model and summarise both project design and project management information in the form of a heat map. First thing we need to do is draw a standard chart and select heat map from the drop down list of available types. The example on screen will take a series of functional requirements, arranging them based on properties such as author, priority and phase. Heat maps are typically used to illustrate codependent properties that could influence strategic or project level decisions. For example, this heat map indicates who authored functional requirements, grouping them based on priority, and then using cell colour to identify their respective values. Now let's add our package of functional requirements, being sure to select the checkbox to include all child packages. The next thing we need to do is to use the Appearance tab to specify what colours we will use to render each cell. In this particular example, I shall use numeric values to represent each phase. This will help us to differentiate between functional requirements in the first two phases of development and any requirement in phase 3 or above. In addition to specifying a value such as 1.0 or 2.0, you can also define a range of numeric values. The finished product helps to convey a vast amount of information about authors and phase numbers. We can also see which authors have written requirements, which functional requirements are still in phase 1 and 2 and identify problems. For example, some of the functional requirements have not been assigned to a given author and far too many requirements are still in the first phase of development. The next example on screen provides information about the platform lifecycle and renders a heat map based on custom SQL and their corresponding tagged value properties. The information to render the heat map is obtained from the tagged values of model elements in a given package in conjunction with the custom SQL shown on screen. The root package is specified via a GUID in the code and you'll note that the size and colour of each cell in the heat map are determined by tagged values. We'll use the Kanban diagram to make changes to a given technology, which in turn will impact cost. We can then see how these changes are reflected in the corresponding heat map. For example, let's imagine that a management directive indicates that social media is now a leading edge technology, which means we need to hire a consultant to develop a social media strategy. As a result, the leading edge technology will cost more to implement. So let's use the Kanban diagram to move social networking from state of market to leading edge. To observe changes to our heat map, all we need to do is refresh the chart. You can now see that the social network cell clearly indicates that this technology is leading edge. As a leading edge technology, we need to hire a consultant, so the cost per year will now increase significantly. 
We can now see what impact this will have on our heat map. So if we refresh the chart once again, you'll see that the social network cell is much larger. The visual information contained in heat maps can help identify trends that may not be apparent from reading a spreadsheet of complex numbers. The final heat map data source that we're going to look at is external data in the form of CSV. The heat map on screen represents the 2014 Q1 sales data for a local computer retailer. I shall now demonstrate how to produce a similar heat map based on 2015 sales data found in a CSV file. The 2015 sales data is stored on screen as an internal artifact but could be easily copied from a spreadsheet or existing company report. We've now created a heat map based on CSV data. Heat maps can help us visualise model information allowing us to identify trends and make sense of existing data. For more information about Enterprise Architect 12.1 please visit www.sparksystems.com